limited purpose banking is a proposed reform of the financial system to keep us from having another financial crisis like we saw in 2007 and 2008 and uh, we saw in the Great Depression. We're still seeing financial problems in uh, different parts of uh, Europe right now and over time historically financial crises, banking crises, have produced uh, economic recessions and depressions, downturns in economic activity. Now there's two reasons that this happens. One is that uh, the banking system is running the financial highway system. They're, they're connecting uh, borrowers and lenders and savers and investors. The banking system is involved in interme intermediation. And so you have a borrower here and a lender here and they're doing the connecting an investor and a saver. The connecting is being done by the banking system. So you have this highway system that uh, the bankers are in charge of. Now, if they go out of business, the highway system breaks down. This intermediation, this connecting these people with these people breaks down. So this highway system, this financial highway system is really a public good just like our physical highways are public goods. We wouldn't want all the gas stations to go bankrupt at the same time, to go out of business at the same time, because if all the owners uh, went out of business, they would leave their gas stations and they would walk away from their gas pumps with the keys to the gas pump and nobody would have any gas to drive and the entire economy would shut down. So it's a public good that uh, the highway system, the physical highway system, and the financial highway system is a public good. And we don't want, we do not want bankers to gamble with it. The other aspect of, uh, of the uh, uh, of financial crises is that when the banks get into trouble, everybody concludes that there are bad economic times coming. We don't have uh, a an economy that's perfectly coordinated, that's perfectly coordinated. You know, across the, across the globe, we have tens of millions of different firms, producers, and we have like seven billion households or so, or consumers. All these different actors are not always on the same page. So they're all making decisions about how much to work, and uh, how much to produce and how, how many people to hire. They're making all kinds of economic decisions all the time based on their expectations of how the economy is going to perform. And if the banks get into trouble and every, everyone decides that the economy is not going to do well because the banks are in trouble, then all the different actors may take steps to make that happen individual steps that collectively lead to a recession or a depression. So there are two public goods associated with the financial system. One is this financial highway that we need to keep operating. And the other is the state of confidence about the economy's future. That also is a public good because if everybody sees the banks get into trouble and they all get pessimistic, they all get concerned about the economy's future, they're all going to, they're, they will all take actions to make the bad times that they're worried about happen. They will produce what's called a self-fulfilling prophecy. And that's what we call in economics a coordination failure. So we have seen coordination failures occur uh, in the Great Depression in the U.S. and in other countries around the world in 2007, 2008. Uh, you saw many uh, firms uh, lay off workers at the same time because they thought everybody else was laying off and that they would not have any customers in the future or not as, not as many customers. So we had, again, a self-fulfilling prophecy. So how do you fix the banking system so that we never have these kinds of failures again? How do you get the bankers to uh, not gamble with these two public goods 
Again, the public goods are the highway system and the state of confidence. And because they are public goods, that's why uh, banking is very special. That's why uh, we have a big regulatory apparatus to oversee the banks, but it's being done very poorly. Or it's not working in any case because we've had financial crises and we continue to have them. Uh, but it's because there are these public goods, the highway system itself, the financial highway, and the state of confidence, that we have to regulate the banks. So what can we do to fix the problem? Well, that's where limited purpose banking comes in. And limited purpose banking says that the purpose of the banks is not to uh, borrow money in the form of deposits or by selling bonds to the public, taking in money and then in, and promising to pay it back for sure, and then gambling with it, investing it in risky assets, and maybe not being able to pay back the creditors, in, in which case the bank goes under, the highway system breaks up, breaks down, and the state of confidence in the economy's future is uh, uh, damaged. It's very simple how you can uh, keep the banks from failing. And the, the way to do that is not let them borrow money to uh, invest at risk. And uh, uh, the word limited purpose bank, the words mean you want to limit the banks to their legitimate purpose. And their legitimate purpose is the intermediation, the connecting the borrower and the lender, the saver and the investor. That's their job. Their job is not to gamble with these public goods. So how do you get the banks to uh, do the connecting, do the intermediation without letting them gamble? Well, it's very simple. You don't let them borrow money. You have them take in money in the form of selling shares in the form of equity finance. So under limited purpose banking, all the banks would be transformed into uh, what are called mutual fund holding companies. A mutual fund holding company, and we have a lot of them in the US, is a financial company that uh, markets individual mutual funds. And a mutual fund, an individual mutual fund sells shares of stock, takes in money, and then invests it in things like stocks. For example, a mutual fund that's investing in uh, energy stocks would be taking money and, and handing back shares of stock to itself, to its mutual, to the mutual fund. Let's say I'm running a mutual fund. I issue shares to the public. They give me money. And then I go buy shares of, let's say, Enron. Uh, not Enron, <laughs> Exxon. I buy shares of Exxon. I buy shares of uh, the different energy companies, oil companies or gas companies. That's a energy mutual fund, an equity, a, a mutual fund that's investing in stocks of energy companies. There are 10,000 mutual funds in our country, in the US. They're investing, separate mutual funds that are investing in different things. Some are investing in bonds of corporations. Some are investing in government bonds. Some are investing in, in uh, the stocks of the entire country. Some are investing in foreign stocks. So each one of these equity financed mutual funds is like a small bank that hasn't borrowed any money. And so the idea of limited purpose banking is to take this safe form of banking, which is equity finance mutual fund banking, and make the entire financial system based on that type of banking. Require that all financial corporations operate exclusively as mutual fund holding companies that do one thing only, which is to, to uh, market individual mutual funds that take in money by selling shares and buying assets. Now, when you do that, if the assets go down in value, the people you took the money from, the value of their shares goes down right away, automatically. But you, you have, in terms of running this uh, mutual fund, you have no obligation to pay back anything to those shareholders. In that case, you're saying, I'm going to pay you back for sure what I took from you. Now, the other big problem with the financial system is what we call opacity. 
And that means that the people that are in the current financial system lending money to the banks, the banks are borrowing money saying, I'll pay you back, don't worry. And then the banks are putting the money into investments which they don't disclose. They don't tell the lenders what they're doing with the money. And they say, and the lenders are saying, well, gee, uh, we can't tell what you're doing with our money, so uh, what if we, you know, if we need some guarantee that if you start uh, stealing our money, we can get our money back. Or if you start, if we start worrying about how you're investing your money, we can get our money back. So what the banks do is say, don't worry, you can have your money back as soon as you want. In the case of demand deposits, if you lend, if I borrow money from you in the form of a demand deposit, you give me your money and I give you a checking account and you can demand the money right back at any time. That's called a demand deposit, a deposit that's on demand. You can demand it right back. You won't have to worry so much because I'll invest it. I won't tell you how I'm investing it, but uh, if you start getting worried, I'll give you your money right back. And that's the way this thing has been set up. Now that works fine if, the bank, if not everybody asks for their money. But if everybody asks for their money all at once, uh, and they may do that because they're worried that these investments are not sound. In 2008, when we had the, uh, the financial crisis, the lenders, the public, got very nervous about how the money was being invested by the banks. And they all said, let me get my money out. And let me get my money out because I'm, I'm not just worried about how the money was invested, but I'm also worried about all the other people that invested being nervous. Okay? Fear of financial fraud, suspicions of financial fraud, or suspicions of suspicions of financial fraud, the fact that these people suspect that other people are suspecting fraud, or, or just that the assets were poorly invested, doesn't have to be actual fraud, uh, that is enough to lead to a bank run. And that's what we saw in 2007, 2008. We saw 27 major banks around the world uh, experience bank runs. And then the entire banking system after Lehman Brothers collapsed experienced a massive bank run. So limited purpose banking would eliminate the opacity, would require disclosure of all the securities that the mutual funds are investing in. Very fine, detailed, uh, real-time disclosure on the internet of what your mutual fund is holding, and uh, that's very important. And then also all the money comes in on an equity basis, and that's very important. Now you have a banking system that can never fail, and, uh, and a macro economy which is much more stable through time. I'm hoping that uh, this proposal, Limited Purpose Banking, which I've written about in a book called Jimmy Stewart is Dead, will um, uh, eventually be adopted by different countries, and that we will have a more stable macroeconomic uh, uh, economy uh, through time.